collective memory. And what is collective memory? Well, it's it, it, it refers to how groups remember their past. There are a lot of things in history that we just kind of overlook or kind of put into the memory hole. I was talking about the memory hole, something that comes from Orwell's 1984. Winston had to throw things in the memory hole so nobody would know the truth about history. There have been many generations that have, uh, well, a lot of generations that have passed on or have passed since World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam. All the memories are dying as those who are there have aged and a lot of them have died. Families can always recollect the stories that great-grandpa told about the war. Hollywood can fill in the rest, but is it truly history? And, and, and we need to ask ourselves how emotions affect the collective memory. Collective memory about World War II, Korea, and Vietnam now are simply facts about recollection secondhand. We, when asked to remember World War II, Americans report numerous events, but the majority of people report the attack on Pearl Harbor, D-Day, and the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's what they remember about the wars. To understand a country's memories is to grasp something essential about their national identity and outlook. Of course, countries don't have memories, but it is the people in the country who retain the memories. But often, there are common themes rather than true memories. I mean, CNN does their best to do these uh, shows where they're telling you what happened in history. They replay the 60s, the 90s, the 70s, comedians, just to give you an idea of an almanac of their own version of the story. Collective remembering implies that collective forgetting can occur as well. And, of course, there are memories that are intentionally planted in the zeitgeist, and that is propaganda. Facts are inconvenient when one emotionally invests in well-formulated propaganda that serves a purpose, that serves the narrative. Collective memory of course, is a burgeoning topic of research, one that might be used to understand the perspective of people in other groups, whether of a nation or any political party or any other social group, you'd be able to do an analysis of that and know what they remember and what they don't remember and what is inconveniently overlooked and erased. People really don't want to hear the truth. And they sometimes freak out when you jog their memories about what history tells us. And again, in Orwellian fashion, those who control the past control the present. For example, as early as 1997, Joe Biden acknowledged that expansion into Eastern Europe would provoke a vigorous and hostile reaction from Russia. And it seems that since then, the media has inconveniently reported this or hasn't reported this because they want the narrative to reflect a spur of the moment hostile attack from Russia against Ukraine. No provocation. It just happened. But here's Joe Biden basically making the statement about how you can get Russia angry and tip the scale in a, in, in a situation, this was back in 1997, where he talked about how Europe could be provoked into an attack. I think the one place where the greatest consternation would be caused in the short term would be to admit the Baltic states now in terms of NATO-Russian, U.S.-Russian relations. And if there was ever anything that was going to tip the balance were it to be tipped, in terms of a vigorous and hostile reaction, I don't mean military, in Russia, it would be that. That's Joe Biden, 1997, talking about what would cause a reaction from Russia, and that would be the expansion into the Baltics. And, of course, what are we doing? This is what happens when you kick a fence and there's a big dog there and it may bite you. Yesterday uh, on the show, we had a, a few callers. They, they were calling in, uh, brought, bringing up the bio lab concerns in Ukraine. And I was talking about how I, I always thought there were bio labs in uh, Georgia, not Ukraine. But a lot of listeners have been sending me some really good information to explore this, that the, the Russians, instead of attacking nuclear power plants, they were attacking uh, bio labs. And everybody said, well, this is conspiracy propaganda from Russia. They're not doing that. They're, they're harming people. They're not attacking these, these bio labs. There are no bio labs in Ukraine. You know, that, that's what the fact checkers were telling us. Well, now Marco Rubio decided to uh, ask Undersecretary of State Victoria Nuland if Ukraine has biological research facilities. And basically what she said that confirmed what all the conspiracy theorists knew all along. Listen to this well um i only have a minute left let me ask you um does ukraine have chemical or biological weapons uh 
Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities, which, in fact, we are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces may be seeking to uh, gain control of. So we are working with the Ukrainians on how they can prevent any of those research materials from falling into the hands of uh, Russian forces should they approach. I'm sure you're aware that the Russian propaganda groups are already putting out there all kinds of information about how they've uncovered a plot by the Ukrainians to release biological weapons in the country and with NATO's coordination. If there's a biological or chemical weapon incident or, uh, or attack inside of Ukraine, is there any doubt in your mind that 100 percent it would be the Russians that would be behind it? There is no doubt in my mind, Senator, and it is classic Russian uh, technique to blame on the other guy what they're planning to do themselves. So we can just skip conspiracy theory and call it Russian propaganda. If anybody says anything that, uh, that does not fit the narrative, it's Russian propaganda, not conspiracy theory. But uh, it is conspiracy theory. It has been conspiracy theory. The fact checker said it was conspiracy theory. And so they've been kicking people saying it's not true. And then Victoria Newland says to Rubio that, yes, it is true. So who do you believe? Do you believe it out of the horse's mouth or do you believe conspiracy theorists? <laughs> See, this is, the, this is the beauty of war. There is no truth in war. And I, I just can't believe that people, like, for example, there was an AP story that came out on February 25th about Zelensky talking about that remark that he made. He says, I don't need a ride. I need ammunition. He says, I need ammunition, not a ride. He said, well, guess what? The Washington Post came out with a story today saying that Zelensky didn't say this. In fact, they they asked the Biden administration, where did they get this information? Well, from some unknown U.S. official. They contacted the secretary, uh, the press secretary of Zelensky, and he told the Washington Post that he could not confirm whether President Zelensky had uttered the famous line and was asked to leave the capital by the Americans. So, but the line has become associated with Zelensky saying that he's courageous and and that he's a hero and it's the best line ever uttered during a war. And it didn't happen. At least they can't find anything to source it correctly. But it worked. It's good for morale to lie to people and tell them that, you know, this is all the way they think it is, but it's not. It's not the way you think it is.